Hey, so what is happening, people? Hey, guys. Today, I'm going to go over how I clean my concrete uh, dog lots, how I clean these barrels that you see behind me, and some of the things that I do in maintenance on my, on my dog lot that is concrete. Put fresh water across the concrete. That kind of helps. But I'm going to also power wash it today. And I'm going to also treat it with some Clorox. So anyway, guys, hey, stay with us, and I'll show you how I clean my lots. And I hope you enjoy the video. So one of the first things that I like to do, as you noticed, uh, you can see in these lots behind me, uh, there's poo kind of scattered all around the lot and uh, you'll have some dog bedding. I like to use pine shavings uh, for my dog bedding. It's fairly cheap. But anyway, these are my uh, dog houses and I've had some questions on YouTube about, let's see, let's, let's take a look at it, how it is. So my dog houses, I have them about 16 inches off the ground so I can wash out up underneath it and I just have them sitting on a wood frame that I made. I kind of beveled this portion. Uh, and inside of the lot, I have people ask me a question, isn't it cold? So as you can see, I have fitted a piece of plywood to the edges. So you see it makes a nice taper right here on both sides. Gives the dog a flat place to lay and also you can see I've cleaned out most of the pine shavings that's in it. But underneath that plywood there, it's actually screwed through the plywood into the frame to actually hold it in place. Now under there, there's an air gap. And that purpose is, for one at a time, there's an air gap there. Ike, hush. And that keeps, um, you know, an air pocket there so the barrel is much warmer. And we'll talk about that a little later. But up underneath there, there's a void. And in that void, you get grass, dog hair, pine shavings, and all up underneath there. And what I want to prevent is a tick infestation or flea infestation. So about twice a year, I like to remove that plywood out of the bottom, just back the screws out, and clean that out and disinfect the inside of the dog box. Well, the plastic barrel. Disinfect that, that keeps the dogs clean, keeps it healthy, and trust me, you do not want a tick infestation. I have had that issue before, and you do not want that, so uh, let's get started. And this is what and this is what I'm gonna show you and this is what I'm talking about it gets under these boards that you have to be careful with and I'm gonna show you how much stuff collects up and you see all of that is up underneath that board and that right there will hatch ticks and fleas really bad all of that there that is what you got to because ticks will lay their eggs in just about anything, especially if there is a food resource close. Trust me, I know this. Anyway, now that I have the board out, and let me let me show you this board. Uh, so this is a board that actually goes in the bottom, and you'll notice right along the edge. Let me get some good light. Right along the edge, I cut this bevel. I think that's about a 45 degree bevel maybe a little more all along the edge here that bevel is what fits along the edge of the barrel roll to give the dog a flat surface so anyway i'm gonna pop this i'm gonna take this off because i have that board the screws go through that board through the bottom of the barrel into into the frame here you can see this frame here, boom. And so I'm just gonna carry the barrel out and into the yard, dump it, 
and we'll use the shop vac to uh, vacuum the rest of it out. If we roll it back and forth a few times, we can get the majority. And you can see this is a good picture of what is up underneath that thing. And that is nice and dry. Um, and that's just a good place for critters to lay eggs and whatnot. And the rest of the stuff inside, we'll vacuum that out real quick. So another thing that I'm going to do before I put that board back in there, now I've vacuumed this out really good, got a, just about all the dust out of it, all the debris out of the barrel. But, you know, still there may be some flea larvae or whatever uh, inside of the barrel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this home to, vent, home to fence. This is the same stuff that you would use inside of your house. Right here, boom. That kill spiders and roaches and whatnot. And I'm going to use this and I'm going to spray the inside of this barrel. And I'm just going to give it a coating, uh, top and bottom. And if it's anything left in that barrel, uh, that should take care of it. Once it dries, it won't harm the dog at all because the dog is going to be laying on the plywood anyway. So that would prevent anything that's left in there from living through the winter time and hatching or what. That's just one more precautionary step that I take in uh, doing so. So I'm gonna put the GoPro back on my hat and we're gonna get the inside of this spray. So now that's done. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put the barrel back on the frame. And we're going to get this screwed back together and we're going to get the plywood screwed back down. And I think we'll start us a new hole. I'm using, remember, I'm, I'm using three or either two and a half inch screws. A couple of things that we want to do on this is we want to get the, we want to screw through the plywood, through the bottom of the barrel, which is sticking up a little bit, and then into the frame so it'll hold it into place. Because you can see these chew marks, these dogs will chew it. And you don't want the, of course, you don't want the barrel to fall off. So. I've got a couple of more screws to do in the very back. I'll cut the GoPro off and do that. And uh, then we'll finish cleaning the lot. Before I move on to clean this lot, I know I just said that I would clean the lot. I want to discuss these barrels. Uh, here we live, I live in uh, kind of on the Virginia, North Carolina border, north of Greensboro It's where we're at. And, you know, we don't have those cold, cold climates like we do further north. And so I get by with these barrels. But the strange thing is, you would think, I've been out here when it, I mean, really got cold. I mean, down in the teens. And of course, I have a shelter in a building just behind uh, here. So it does offer some protection. Here where I'm at, wintertime, the wind blows west and out of the north, which is behind me. So this building aids in some protection. But the strange thing is, when I come out here, all the dogs are laying right here, right here at the door. And I'm assuming it's because they put off so much heat in the wintertime staying warm. It's one reason they drink more water. It's kind of hot in the back. Uh, and I have came out here worried about them and literally put my hand in that barrel. And that barrel is warm uh, just from their body heat. Plus, I have a lot of pine shavings in there that they can bury down in. But every one of the dogs will be right here at the door. Don't know if you experienced that or you actually noticed that. If you do, please comment below. Uh, as always, YouTube is a great place to learn, and we're all learning from each other. So anyway, 
let me stand this up and we're going to get this uh, concrete cleaned off. Okay, so I have, this is about a two gallon spray bottle, just old cheap spray bottle. You can buy it at Walmart or Lowe's. And I have some Clorox here and I usually mix a 50-50. So if you have a gallon of Clorox to a gallon of water or half a gallon of Clorox to a half a gallon of water. And normally I'll do this about twice a year on the concrete. I don't have any visiting dogs to speak of. Most all my beagles stay in the same lot. If you have a lot of dogs in and out on your concrete, I suggest you do this monthly. And this keeps down any bad bacteria that you may have develop on your concrete. So anyway, uh, let's go in and we're going to get this sprayed. Now you notice I have some rough places in my concrete and I want to get them really good because I tried, to, I poured this concrete myself and with the help of my son and a friend of mine and I am no professional by any means but I can do a lot of things and the concrete got a little rough here when I was finishing and I tried to keep the concrete as slick as possible just so everything would move off of this concrete uh, fairly quickly. Now I have a six inch slope from the doorway out there that you see, a six inch slope, and that helps move all debris to the outside of the lot. That lot from this corner down to the other corner falls about six to eight inches. So there's a natural slope in the uh, ground. And I have gravels lined along the edge. So as the water comes off of the edge of the roof, it falls on the poo on the outside, dissipates it, and it all flows downhill. And that's kind of how I had mine designed. Now my suggestion would be, if you don't have this type of slope, I would have used some sort of PVC in half to transfer any solids away from the lot. In the summertime, you will have some smell from these lots. You won't be able to get away from that again just a nice even coverage and we'll let that sit for about 15 minutes before we start cleaning it anyway we're going to give us about 15 minutes i'm going to hook the uh, pressure washer up and uh, i'm going to pressure wash this lot and you notice i've moved to i've moved this dog and this dog into my third lot that way i can get in here and work freely that way they get to socialize a little together and that way I can do these two lots and then I'll move those dogs back over here. And uh, anyway, we'll proceed on. So anyway, we're ready for the pine shavings. We have cleaned the inside of the barrel thoroughly and uh, we put the barrel back on the frame. We've Cloroxed the floor, we power washed it. Now we're ready for the pine shavings. And we're gonna put some in and I usually put about a third, depending on how cold it is. The colder it is, the more pine shavings I put in here. Some of the dogs are really bad about digging the pine shavings out, but hey, there's nothing you can do about that. You just have to keep replenishing them. And normally I know how many I need. Once I lay this down, I kind of look if you look back in there, you see how they piled up and the dog will get in there and scratch them around and uh, kind of sort them out a little bit. This will be the test. This is Trixie. Say hey Trixie. She's about 14 years old. 13, 14, something like that. She's got some age on her. And uh, so the real test is she knows what's going on. She's been with me long enough. I ain't hush that uh, she knows she's going to have some new bedding. So let's go see if she likes her new clean house. You happy you got a clean house? Huh? You happy you got a clean house?
You happy you got a clean house? Good girl. Yeah, good girl. You happy you got a clean house? Go on up in there. Go on. You can enjoy your house. Go on up in there. Go on. Get up in there. Get in there. Enjoy your house. Get in there. Come on. Up. Oh, right here. So anyway, guys, uh, you see, see, she's more interested in kind of loving on me than she is to go in the house so in a few minutes once i go to these other lots she'll go in there and she'll start digging around and make herself some beds so anyway hey guys i hope you've seen something in the video that you enjoyed i hope you've seen something in the video you learned and may help you with your lots uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and hey please comment about uh how you guys may operate with your uh particular lots anyway hey guys don't forget to hit that like button, click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. Hey, and as always, you remember, it's a wild life, and I'll see you on the wall.